Thank you, Bells, for that beautiful beginning to our worship service today. I welcome all of you today on Palm Sunday, which is also Passion Sunday. And so our service begins with the celebration of palms and the remembrance of Jesus coming in to Jerusalem on that triumphant day. And then quickly we turn and we, we focus on the Passion reading. This is the one Sunday in the morning where we don't, we, we don't have a sermon because the, the text itself is so profound. We have a longer reading of the text and the choir has put together some beautiful music to emphasize the text. So it's a lovely day and I'm really glad that you're all here to, to celebrate with us. There are some announcements which I'm not going to read or dwell on, but I just want to draw your attention because they're important. One about the pictorial directory, one about the active shooter presentation that's going to be happening, another about the rummage sale coming up, uh, and perhaps most pertinent today is please take a look at the, the, uh, the schedule of our, our Passion Week services for Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and our three services on Easter Sunday, plus our breakfast put on by the youth. So please look at those on your own. We also want to um, mention that the youth have been holed up in Todd's office and some of the parents for trivia weekend. And <laughs> they're still in there trying their 131st or something out of 330. But uh, more importantly, today we gather together in worship as we celebrate Palm Sunday and Passion Sunday. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphaga and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you untying it, just say this, The Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They said, The Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus. And after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. And as he was now approaching the path down from Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had been seen saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would shout out. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. On this day, long ago, he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these, our branches, and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross so that, joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
enter now into the contemplation of the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ and meditate on the salvation of the world through his sufferings, death, and burial, and his resurrection. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading this morning comes to us from Isaiah. Now this reading for this week is the third of four suffering servant songs found in Isaiah. And it was written in the final years of the Babylonian exile, around 538 BC. The subject is a servant of God who speaks of his life in God's service with both pride and with religion. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning he wakened, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord has opened, God has opened my ear I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheek to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. This is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Now the festival of unleavened bread, which is called Passover, was near. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to put Jesus to death, for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered into Judas, called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers of the temple police about how he might betray him to them. They were greatly pleased and agreed to give him money. So he consented and began to look for an opportunity to betray him to them when no crowd was present. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us, that we may eat it. Where do you want us to make preparations for it? When you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks you, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, already furnished. Make preparations for us there. So they went and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When the hour had come, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this, and divide it among yourselves, for I tell you that from now on I will not eat of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper. This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood.
But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another which of them it could be who would do this. A dispute also arose among them as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors, but not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you, just as my Father has conferred on me, a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail, and you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And Peter said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you know me. When I sent out, when I sent you out without a purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, no, not a thing. But now the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise a bag. And the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was counted among the lawless. And indeed, what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, Lord, look, here are two swords. It is enough. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. <laughs> And an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial.
while Jesus was still speaking. Suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him. Judas, but, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw, that, saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, Have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were abandoned? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. And they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with them, but he denied it. Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, You also are one of them. Man, I am not. Then about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophesy, who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together, and they brought him to their council. They said, if you are the Messiah, tell us. If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them asked, are you then the Son of God? You 
say that I am. Then they said, what further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him. We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man, but they were insistent. He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee, where he, where he began, even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean, and when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod, with his soldiers, treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Pilate became, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence, and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, but he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted out together, Away with this fellow! Release Barabbas for us! This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified. And their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder. And he handed Jesus over as they wished.
As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of people followed him. Among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them. Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others, also who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right, one on his left. Then Jesus spoke. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing, and the people stood by, watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine. If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who was hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise.
It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. <coughs> Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching these things. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who, though a member of the council, had not agreed to their plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation. The Sabbath was beginning.
come with him from Galilee followed. And they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath they rested according to the commandment. Our creed today is also a prayer of confession. Please join me. I believe in God the Father, who created all that exists, and who also created me and those like me. We have never lived up to the hope that God planned for his people. I believe that we are sinful and cannot save ourselves. I believe in Jesus Christ. God's only Son, who, though he lived a pure and sinless life, was sent by God to overcome the sins of all people. I believe that he lived among us, taught and healed, and preached the way to salvation. I believe that Jesus marched toward Jerusalem to accept the will of the Father, and he surrendered himself to those who hated him. He was beaten and falsely charged. He was crucified and died on the cross in payment for the sins of the world. I believe that, along with the people of all times, I own the share of the guilt for Jesus' death. But I also believe that Jesus rose again from the dead three days later, winning victory over sin and death, releasing me from my sins. I believe in the Holy Spirit, sent by Jesus, our Counselor and Friend, who leads us and inspires us to live in liberty and service, now that we are free from our sins. I believe in the Church that the Spirit creates on earth, and that one day we shall join the Church triumphant. Dear friends in Christ, trusting in Christ's Passover from death to new life, we pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Let us pray. God most holy and humble, plant in your church Christ's spirit of humility. We have heard again the story of his passion. Remove any barriers preventing us from seeing his saving work on the cross. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of creation, you reveal your will for all creation through stones, seas, mountains, and meadows. In the splendor of what you have made, make us part of your care for everything, both great and small. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of justice, rescue those who suffer torture and free those held captive unjustly by others. You know their pain because you suffered it yourself. Bring to light the hidden systems that perpetuate injustice among your people. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of compassion, 
pour courage and hope into the hearts of people who feel like they are wasting away with distress and grief. Especially, we pray for John, Ed, Susan, Sherry, Deb, Jan and Ewart, Kevin and Judy's family, John and Courtney's family. Bring comfort to Otto and family, Donna, Mary, Bill, Tyler and Logan. Restore the health of Helen, Rachel, Nancy, Lois, Barb, Diane, Linda, and Stacy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gather your saints, loving God, into the new covenant that Christ has established for all creation. When we fall into sin, continually renew us until we dwell with Christ our Savior and Lord. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Attend to the needs of the whole world with your saving grace, O God, and lead us all into new life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Also Please share that peace with us. Let us pray. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray together as Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May God create her bless you and keep you. May Christ be ever light for your lives. May the Spirit